Hello, so we are playing some uh, Abzan in Modern and um, at first it seems like a very chaotic uh, build but I will explain uh, I will explain why uh, every card is here and why are we playing and the cards we are playing in a deck uh, so uh, the core of the deck is blank so uh, we have uh, four ephemerate, uh, four neo, three neo touch of the spirit, touch the spirit realm, and some undying cards like uh, three undying eagles and four molecular birds. Uh, we have greaves and solitudes as our primary targets for blinking. Other than that, uh, we have stone forges and uh, some uh, one-offs in a deck. Uh, as Skyclave Apparition, Endurance, Eternal Witness. Uh, I also have a lot of uh, one-offs one in sideboard, uh, and the uh, reason to have all these one-offs uh, one is for Eladrami's calls in a main, uh, which allow us to tutor uh, the card uh, creature we need, like Aurek Champion against Burn, Sanctifier against uh, DRC, and stuff like that. So, I'm also playing one Grist, uh, which is tutorable with the Ladrami's Call, and can be used as a remover for Planeswalkers or big creatures and stuff like that, and just as a value cr value card. Okay, so uh, deck is playing only 24 lands in 80 card deck, so. That's a part of the reason why this deck performs good for me. Uh, I played, uh, I think, uh, six leagues, uh, six leagues with total score uh, 20, 23 uh, 7, uh, and it's been uh, really good for me. Uh, our last league was a 5 0 league. Uh, so after this uh, we will go through the games and watch and comment uh, the games and the deck. Uh, so the primary uh, goal of the deck uh, is uh, to use all these 1 mana and 2 mana blink effects uh, to, uh, on our creatures uh, to create enough value and hate we need to win the game. So uh, definitely best play the deck can offer is uh, Grief uh, Ephemerate turn 1 into Stoneforge Mystic or Tarmogoyf turn 2. Uh, other than that, uh, against a lot of aggro matchups, uh, Solitude and Blink or Undying is uh, in most cases uh, the play that will uh, win you the game. Uh, also, uh, we have a lot of uh, other removals, so I'm playing uh, four Prismatic Endings, one White March, uh, one abrupt decay and one fatal push and also uh, touch the spirit realm can be used as a removal it can exile artifact or creature or it can blink one of our creatures or artifacts uh, also uh, grist is removal and skyclave apparition is uh, also removal uh, so uh, the reason why are we playing so many one-offs, uh, aside from uh, creature one-offs, uh, is to satisfy our uh, black uh, card count, which is uh, pretty important uh, because of the grief. And uh, I'm currently on a low end of uh, black card count, and uh, it is not possible to remove any black card uh, from the deck. Uh, like this you could also add few but uh, I wouldn't play a lower amount of black cards than I'm currently playing uh, it would be really bad for grief 
and uh, and uh, being able to pitch grieve turn one. Okay, so uh, uh, also in the deck I have uh, two little form blight. Uh, which uh, should be a very good card now, uh, especially because uh, Urza Saga is definitely one of the most played cards in modern, and it's like a, like a bit worse spreading seas. It does let your opponent uh, have mana of any color if they pay one life. But uh, first effect is same as uh, Spreading Seas, so it destroys Urza Sagas and also it's uh, definitely great against Tron and uh, Amulet Titan and other uh, utility lands. Uh, so uh, I was skeptic about a little from Blight at first. Uh, but uh, it showed up to be a pretty good card and pretty uh, and the card I also put the third one on sideboard and it's maybe the card uh, that uh, most often uh, comes in uh, especially uh, last few days because as I said there's so many uh, saga and uh, Tron decks okay so uh, I think uh, we mentioned all cards in uh, in main, uh, uh, except uh, some standard Stoneforge package and two Agadim's Awakening. Uh, so uh, these two Agadim's Awakening and four Malakir's Rebirth allow us to play only 24 lands. Uh, with these six, we have uh, 30. Uh, but uh, Malakir Malak Rebirth is more often used as a spell than a land uh, and uh, Agadim Awakening is also there for grief purposes. Uh, so uh, for lands uh, I have Triom, I have some shocks, uh, I have some fast lands, uh, three basics and some fetches and only one uh, Kamigawa land uh, I opted to play Takenoma uh, because I have so many uh, permanent hate uh, in the deck that uh, Bosiju is not uh, the card I need very much uh, in this build so uh, I opted for Takenoma because it produces black mana which is very important to have uh, turn uh, 1 because of Undying Evils and uh, Monocure Rebirths um, and also uh, the ability Takenuma has is the most significant for this deck because uh, it, uh, it allows us to get back one of our creatures and all of our creatures uh, can be game winning in certain situations so it seems like the most important thing to do okay so uh, that's it on a sideboard uh, for uh, equipment equipment i opted for sword of fire and ice butter skull uh, color complete no lion sash no blade of phony and no new equipment just these four uh, just these three uh, that are for this uh, kind of build, in my opinion, the best three you can play. Uh, so on sideboard, I have some uh, Cascade Hate, uh, Mono uh, Burn Hate, and maybe Proves Hate and stuff like that. Uh, Sanctifier against uh, Grixis, uh, Third Little from Blight against uh, Lance, One Collector Ophi. Two more endurances, one is in main, uh, uh, some more artifact enchantment hate in uh, force of fig two force of figures, and one knight of Aut autumn. Of course, uh, as you already saw, it's a Yorian deck, obviously. And I have uh, two uh, crime punishments, uh, so I play crime punishments over engineered explosives uh, because. Uh, 
it's an Abzan card and it can be pitched on Grief or Solitude so it's uh, better for this build than Explosives. Um, I used to have a Galuctee here but recently uh, I see less uh, Throne and uh, Control uh, decks and more uh, combo, uh, Yagmoth and similar stuff, so I replaced it with one Revoker. Okay, so all of these one-offs one -offs are tutorable with a call and obviously very effective when you board them in. So, okay, that's the deck. I just uh, had uh, 5 -0 in the league uh, last night and we are going to go uh, through the matches and uh, see how it played out uh, also uh, day after the day after this result Lotus was banned and um, it uh, I think it will help that help uh, this deck a lot uh, because uh, it, this kind of build wasn't so popular for now but uh, it is a very good deck and very playable and very fun to play also and also very strong and doesn't really have uh, very bad matchups it has like a lot of 50-50 uh, matchups and matchups where you're slightly unfavorable to win uh, but there is uh, no matchup where it, that is impossible to win so uh, it's a pretty good mid-range deck and uh, uh, and it could it could uh, see more play uh, after the Lurus ban definitely uh, because Yorion uh, is now left as uh, probably the best companion and uh, of course uh, there is four color on that control uh, already as a tier 1 deck here and uh, Merktide, Merktide uh, deck will also probably be one of the best decks in the format uh, but uh, the thing is that uh, this deck is uh, one of the best decks against Merktide deck so uh, this is like maybe one of uh, four or five decks that I think, in my opinion, performs uh, really great against Merktide. So if Merktide becomes number one deck in Modern, uh, this could be a very, deck, very good deck to play in Modern in future. Uh, but I guess uh, time will tell and uh, it will be hard for this kind of uh, deck to gain popularity because it's a uh, extremely hard deck uh, to pilot and it depends a lot on uh, pilot skill and uh, I play it a lot but uh, uh, I also uh, did a few mistakes in this 5-0 league uh, as you will see I will uh, I will show you uh, but uh, Mm, it is a pretty uh, hard uh, deck to play uh, with many decisions you have to make and uh, let's go just now and see how it played out in the league okay just let me check it's recording okay so okay th this is it uh, uh, Going to game one now. Okay, opponent played first, and uh, they were playing hammer. So all uh, all uh, decks I played against in this league are uh, uh, tier one or tier two decks, very popular decks. Uh, each one of them. Uh, so uh, it wasn't easy definitely uh, to win this I'll just pause here because my opponent my opponent played hammer uh, and 
I misclicked in this moment. I uh, accidentally uh, pressed one when they played Colossus Hammer, and Colossus Hammer entered the battlefield and triggered the Cigar the Aid. Obviously, uh, the best was. Uh, to destroy Exile Cigar the Aid in response, which was my intention, but I accidentally uh, misclicked, and uh, so I was in a situation where uh, exiling Cigar the Aid uh, wasn't an option, and uh, I had to remove Colossus Hammer, uh, but it, uh, it's also not, uh, not bad uh, to, to remove the hammer, and it can definitely be a better play if... Uh, so let's just step here again. Uh, it can be a better play if uh, they have Paladin, of course. Uh, so in this situation, it's pretty important to uh, do your stacks correctly. Uh, you put Evoke first on a stack and then ability uh, of a Solitude, so you can exile a stone forge first, then a reality chip uh, unattaches, and then you can use uh, ephemerate to blink your solitude and exile also a chip which has now become a creature. Okay, so you don't want to uh, miss that. Uh, if you miss that, uh, you would just uh, you would just remove stone forge and uh, chip would uh, uh, stay on the battlefield. Okay, so uh, uh, this game I was in a, a very good situation, as, as you know uh, my ephemerate had a rebound, so they weren't able to play anything this turn, they just put a Lurus to hand. And I was in an inc incredible position, so uh, I'm now able to put to put Caldra uh, into play. Uh, and go if in the same turn, uh, which is then an attack for 8 this turn and for little next turn, uh, which is uh, really bad for uh, my opponent. But I accidentally again misclicked, uh, it was really uh, two mi misclicks uh, this, uh, this game. I wanted to uh, put a Caldera into play first, but I yielded to ability before and wasn't able to change that. Uh, so I had to play another Mystic and Goyf, which was also uh, like a fine, uh, fine play. Nothing, uh, nothing uh, too bad about that. Uh, it would be of course better if I already had Caldera on battlefield and attacked with it. So in this situation is definitely just to go sword, uh, gain some life and force them to uh, block with Paladin or kill Paladin anyway with sword ability. Uh, so my opponent didn't have much uh, to do, they had a chip, but uh, I was in too uh, large advantage in this moment for them to catch up even with chip. Uh, and uh, that was it, I just exiled their core and uh, they conceded. Okay, so that was game one. Let's see game two. Okay, we can, before game two, I can just go uh, through the cyborg plan against Hammer. So on cyborg, uh, I bring in two crime punishments, I bring in Revoker, Collector Ophi, uh, third Lithi Form Blight, uh, one Knight of Autumn and two Force of Figures. So uh, it's really a large amount of cards uh, against Hammer, which can be played in other matchups and are good in also many other matchups. So it's uh, there are very good cards that uh, can uh, take away game from Hammer very easily and uh, so I would say the deck has pretty good uh, post-board matchup against Hammer and also pre-board uh, it's, uh, it's very good against Hammer and also Merktide uh, which will probably be uh, to most play decks after uh, Lurus Ban maybe Hammer not but Merktide definitely 
Okay, so on game two, I keep a very uh, clunky hand, two abandoned growths, so very dependent on my draws. Uh, as you can see, I drawed many lands and uh, it wasn't good for me. Uh, draw two lands. But opponent uh, didn't have uh, anything spectacular. Um, uh, sorry, they did have a cigar, they and hammer, and uh, I felt forced to use my solitude of the Darmis because they only had three cards in hand, and uh, I was guessing that they di didn't probably have uh, much in their hand. Uh, so uh, I decided to use my solitude on attack not to take 11 damage and but unfortunately I just drew more lands and one ephemerate which didn't do anything because I didn't have creatures okay uh, opponent played another stone forge I uh, had goif but it wasn't big and uh, it wasn't the best draw in this position they also had a reality chip and uh, right now it was a very difficult position for me uh, because I wasn't able to uh, get rid of the chip uh, which will uh, win uh, them a game uh, ok I just put your into hand to cast it next turn but they did uh, have some incredible draws, another hammer and they equipped all on Paladin so I was ready to play my Yorion and save my Undying uh, Evil but uh, there is a low, was a low possibility at that time succeeding to uh, win this true reality chip but uh, in the current situation uh, I had uh, Undying Evil to block with my Yorion and uh, I had a game if uh, if my opponent didn't draw didn't play a thousand cards from top of their deck and uh, they succeeded to find Stoneforge Mystic uh, very easily and uh, Shadow Spear on Paladin was exactly a lethal exactly lethal damage uh, uh, with their paladin and that was it that was game two okay so we can go to game three okay so game three playing first a uh, very good sideboard against hammer so uh, this is a very good game I want you to see this game because something incredible happened uh, which happens very often and that is a uh, collector of the against hammer as you can see uh, they played three artifacts turn one and uh, I untapped played collector of the, and that's it that's the game stolen game from hammer they can't really do much at this point they need removal from uh, for Ophi and they don't play much removal probably didn't bring in anything against uh, this deck so uh, collector Ophi is uh, is uh, is over for them only thing uh, they can have is in this situation is Urza Saga uh, but I have other cards that can uh, get rid of Urza Saga and I drew immediately Force of Figure which I used to destroy the chip and the Saga at this point they were just attacking for one with Nexus and me attacking with Ophi and I also had uh, very nice cards in hand Decays, uh, Solitudes, Endings, uh, Revoker for if they kill Ophi, I just play it on Hammer and uh, it's uh, like worse Ophi uh, uh, which uh, just uh, prevents sh uh, 
hammer from attacking, uh, uh, equipping. And uh, that was it. Uh, very uh, game, very easily won with the collector of fee. So game in which I didn't even have to use my prismatic endings, uh, decays, and solitudes. Uh, and uh, it's like a pretty amazing card to have on sideboard against uh, for now the best deck in format for many months. Okay, that was uh, that was a hammer game uh, first round. Uh, let's see second game. As I said, I played all the best decks uh, currently in a format before uh, Lurus ban. I had to mulligan to six and kept a reasonable hand uh, with two Stoneforge Mystics. Okay, uh, game two, I played uh, second against uh, Merktite, uh, which is uh, probably going to be the best deck in format. And so, uh, I want you to notice this. So, uh, I'm playing against future best deck in format. I'm playing second. I am not able to uh, respond. I didn't have an answer for their turn one Ragavan. And uh, I still won the game pretty easily. So uh, just uh, take a look at what's happening in this game. So, so uh, I uh, I was sure my opponent is going to respond uh, this Stoneforge Mystic uh, on my turn after I play it if they don't counter it, and uh, that was uh, clearly an opportunity to play my Solitude. Uh, even though if I didn't have uh, ephemerate and uh, multiple targets for it, but it was uh, an ideal opportunity for me to play Solitude and kill this Ragavan because I didn't have um, I didn't have solution in my starting uh, hand uh, to get rid of the Ragavan. So this was a pretty important uh, play um, to use this. Uh, their tapping end of turn to destroy the Ragavan. Okay, so again, uh, again, again, they are tapping out, allowing me uh, to play Stoneforge Mystic uh, with opened uh, Ephemerate, which is pretty good for me. So if they try to kill my Stoneforge Mystic, they have to have two removals, and then they can't have removal for my other other cool stuff uh, I have. So I use the Ephemerate, but they have had two removals, and I was again left in perfect situation when they, I know they are tapped out, so I can play my Apparition on their Channeler and just uh, have another very good turn. Uh, that's it. And so they only had uh, one card in hand, and uh, I wanted uh, to make sure I wanted to make sure they don't hit my glyph, and I was right because they had uh, hit in their hand, and I uh, removed two cards in my hand to get rid of the hit, which I think was uh, pretty important for this match because it allowed me. Uh, to put uh, my Goif on the battlefield, uh, which was large, and uh, having uh, having sword in hand, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a way to end this game. So I drew another Mystic. I opted to play it as the only had one card in hand, and uh, I am able to put Caldera next turn in play. Uh, there was no uh, need to fetch there now. I think I did it accidentally, but I would have fetched anyway, so it wasn't uh, important. Uh, and that was it. They didn't have uh, Merktide, they didn't have uh, solutions to my two large creatures, and uh, that was it. Okay, uh, let's see game two again, playing second, and again winning. 
against Merc Tide. And again, I win with Mulligan to 6 on a draw. So, it's pretty important to notice that uh, because uh, of uh, my experience and uh, just how good the deck is in general against uh, in this matchup. Uh, I also had uh, last game also against Merktide. You will see that later. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, there is a lot of chance that they have counterspell here, uh, but uh, I don't want them to play. Uh, I had uh, so much luck here, obviously. This was a lucky draw for me uh, because I drew uh, Abundant Harvest into Basic Land, uh, which is obviously really good for me in this situation when they're playing Blood Moon and uh, so it was definitely a lucky draw uh, lucky draw this game which won me the game uh, as I was able to uh, remove the Blood Moon with my uh, top deck prismatic ending I had uh, everything now. Removal for Merktide, another removal for Merktide, the graveyard. So, really good uh, situation. And from this point, uh, it's pretty difficult for them uh, to do anything. Uh, I decided uh, to let my Skyclay die uh, and just play this uh, Dummy Skull before they get uh, treasure. So in this situation, if they counter Sanctifier, I am able to play something else. So, uh, after having Sanctifier, I decided to play Endurance, so that I remove possibility of them casting Merktide completely. Uh, as I drew uh, two solutions to instantly uh, trick uh, and kill their Ragaman attack I decided to attack with both and uh, I think I think it was a low chance that they had uh, two solutions for my uh, my tr combat trick to block their Ragaman and uh, that was it I just blinked the Sanctifier and blocked their Ragaman and had uh, uh, rebound Ephemerate uh, for Endurance to again remove their graveyard and it was pretty much a game over for them. Uh, okay, that's it. That's uh, game 2 Merktide. Uh, let's go to see game 3. It's one... Uh, game 3 is one of... Uh, the, one of the trickiest matchups for the deck. Uh, it's uh, Yagmot. Uh, that's the reason why I brought in uh, a revoker on the sideboard and uh, if you don't have grief turn one uh, it's a difficult uh, to deal uh, with all their threats and their combo combo kills uh, so, but they didn't have anything special. I was able to get rid of their Yagmut without them drawing thousand cards. And this uh, Touch the Spirit Realm is obviously a very good card against Yagmut because now I uh, I play the Touch and then I uh, can exile it later with Yorion. And uh, because the touch uh, comes back at uh, the end of the turn, uh, okay, okay. So let's just let's just stop here. 
and uh, touch uh, comes back at the end of turn so the Yagmoth comes back to play they have to sack Yagmoth and end of turn touch comes back into play and then you again remove uh, the Yagmoth uh, which survived so uh, pretty good uh, card to get rid of their Yagmoths uh, that uh, it's a new addition to the deck from Kamigawa and a really good overall card for the deck I'm pretty satisfied uh, about it and uh, so uh, this was a game winning game winning play so end of turn they go short of calling so I have to uh, with this with uh, this hand I have to go uh, solitude in response to short so I don't let them uh, draw uh, multiple cards with Yagmat and uh, and uh, lose my ability to exile their creatures. So I go just uh, Solitude, pitch, uh, pitch card, play Undying Evil, kill both of their ghosts, and after they tutor for Yagmoth, then I ephemerate my Solitude, and that is game over. You have to be careful always to stack, uh, stack your uh, stack correctly your uh, elementals abilities okay so as i said i played the ephemerate and that was it for them for them with me with my grist on the field and solitude and only one card in their hand and uh, that's it so game one for me uh, very easily solitude win solitude uh, undying win that's one of the most often uh, often uh, wins with this deck, but uh, it's far more complicated than that. And um, okay, so game uh, two, I had the uh, okay hand, nothing special, but they had that his turn one to do for my Adamis uh, call, so I'm um, very much depending on the draws, and uh, draws weren't, uh, weren't crazy good. So I wasn't in a good situation in this game. They played Necromancia and my Solitude, which is decent, decent thing to do from their side. Okay, I played uh, Touch the Spirit Town because. Um, there's a possibility the, uh, that the Yagma deck can get stuck on mana sometimes and obviously uh, them playing a Grist next turn was game winning for them as I wasn't able to get rid of this Grist for the rest of the game and uh, it's a really uh, hard thing uh, for me if I don't draw my if I don't draw my prismatic endings to deal with Grist, and it, in most cases it means game loss. Uh, okay, so pretty difficult games, game for me. Uh, didn't have much solutions except from uh, drawing... Uh, drawing uh, prismatic ending which uh, didn't happen I did uh, find some ok cards in process but I, I didn't want to use my ephemerate uh, on their draw step I decided to risk it uh, for ter two turns and unfortunately uh, a second turn they drew Yagmut which meant uh, the game is over if I used Ephemerate on their doorstep here I could have discarded Yagmut but then I leave my Goif exposed to Grist and uh, it's also game over for me then I try to play a bit more Try to go Yorion, uh, remove their Yagmoth, but they were in a position where they could draw just infinite cards and uh, find what they need. So, uh, so that was it. 
that was the game too. They just found uh, the combo and uh, just combo killed me next turn. Okay, so let's go to game three. Again, game three, playing first. Uh, I decided to keep my son. Uh, it was nothing special, but uh, okay, son. Uh, they got rid of my best card in my hand. Um, so I had didn't have much to do. No, uh, no griefs, no pressure, stone forges, and but I had a solitude blink, and that uh, can often be enough uh, to win the game. So in this situation, I decided to get rid of their Geist, which is a very important uh, card for their deck, obviously. And I just wanted to, to get rid of this aggressive uh, creature since start to give me an option to play longer game. I, at this point, I just uh, put uh, I just put. Uh, Okay, so again, as you can see, it's pretty important, pretty po important to uh, to do your stacks correctly and with solitude abilities and all elemental abilities. So at this situation, um, they were putting a second counter on my solitude, and they had verdant catacombs, which means they can tutor the dried arbor. Uh, but uh, I knew that, but I decided to to go anyway ephemerate on my solitude to make them uh, sack the dried arbor, uh, which meant uh, they will have less mana on turn when they are tap. And uh, at this moment, I didn't have much to do, just my butter skull and uh, Yorion but uh, it was okay position uh, nothing special but uh, not bad at all uh, as I said uh, Touch the Spirit is very good card uh, in this matchup and uh, it allows me to deal with the Yagmoth decks much better than I could have done in a previous version of deck. Uh, so uh, I uh, on purpose gave them uh, to draw two cards by sacking the Geist. Uh, I had to do that to remove Yagmoth obviously. It uh, was very bad not to do that. So in this situation they uh, found Grist and uh, I uh, actually misplayed next turn. So it was uh, in game game one. I had two misclicks uh, that weren't really misplays and worked out okay for me. But this was definitely my first misplay uh, in this league. So in this situation, uh, had uh, I was able to equip my butter skull on Yorion and to kill Grist, but uh, I forgot to do that pre-combat. I remember that after I attacked, I just uh, played too fast and uh, didn't do that, so uh, it left me in a bad situation. If I just kill the Gris here, I would be in a very good position, uh, having 6-3 uh, Yorion with the Femurate in hand. Uh, but uh, I corrected my mistake from last turn and equip Butter Skull on Yorion now. I uh, killed their Grist and uh, so my opponent thought they're, they're in very good position here and tapped a lot of their mana tapped a lot of their mana uh, pre-combat and then attacked with uh, their creature which has the ability to destroy artifact or enchantment on attack 
and they decided to attack uh, to destroy Butterskull first. So uh, I'm not able to block block it, uh, but uh, I had a ephemerate in hand, so I was able to stay in the game. And after they trigger, I was able to ephemerate my Urion and uh, blink the touch. And then, of course, uh, I gave them the opportunity to draw a few more cards before exiling Yagmoth again. But the most important thing uh, is definitely just exiling the Yagmoth in the end. So, uh, again, uh, it's a very weird situation uh, where they have six cards in hand. Uh, I have only one. Uh, I have zero. I have zero just rebound Yorion and my top deck. Uh, but top deck with this deck is uh, uh, most often very good. And my opponent was also uh, playing slow and they were low on time. And uh, as I think I would, uh, I would win the game uh, anyway. Uh, so in this situation, in this situation, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's also a misplay. What I did, because what I did, I uh, I know their deck very good and they're playing short for three. So in this situation, I know I know they uh, are looking for grist. So uh, they could have one mana creature to sack it but uh, it was uh, I think it was better to kill their creature in response and uh, then they can't uh, kill my Yorion and my Yorion kills their Grist uh, on attack next turn so it would be a very bad turn for them and really good one for me So my opponent was left with nothing, uh, no pressure, uh, me 16 life, and they just uh, had uh, one minute on a clock. So they're definitely uh, weren't in a great situation. Uh, I decided to kill their young wolf to prolong. Uh, to prolong uh, the, the time I need uh, to find some uh, creatures and put it on a battlefield. I didn't have much, just depending on my top deck. They found some pressure, definitely, in Geralt Messenger, a young wolf. Uh, nothing too crazy, uh, but my next draw was good, so uh, with that draw I was able to survive for a very long time. I found the Sanctifier uh, and deck here, uh, which uh, blocks their Young Wolf, blocks their Messenger, uh, disables their uh, combo kill if they draw it, so leaves them uh, with low uh, solutions. And also my second top deck was also great, uh, just uh, more creatures into uh, into more creatures, and mm, that's it. That's it. That was the game. That was the game three. So let's go check game four. Game four was a very difficult and interesting game against uh, hardened scales. Which is uh, always a tricky matchup for a mid-range deck, and you have to play uh, you have to play good to win those games. So at this moment, it was a perfect time to do uh, solitude and dying stuff. And just to remove both of the creatures and uh, 
turn 2, start attacking them with lifelink solitude. Uh, didn't have much in hand, just the grief. Uh, so at this moment, uh, at turn 2, I should, I should have played the Triumph if I had it. Not sure right now if I did. But uh, I did have a very good start. But unfortunately, uh, animation model they had uh, game one. It's very uh, difficult, hard card to play against uh, for me in this matchup. Uh, without having uh, answers to it, it uh, it it can easily steal the game. So I wasn't even able to attack with solitude anymore. And they, uh, it just created too much value for them. They didn't have much in hand, but this animation model was uh, more than enough for them uh, to win the game. And uh, so many uh, token uh, tokens. Uh, I wanted to get rid of uh, Hangerback and uh, Ravager as soon as possible and uh, to blink uh, Grief while they have one card in hand uh, Okay, so very tricky position uh, for me definitely in this game uh, so every, every better uh, top deck for them uh, uh, it's very hard for me in this moment so what happened here why well, it's not going just a second maybe I was uh, Okay. Why isn't anything happening right now? I'm not sure. Playback finished. Exiting. Not sure what hap what happened here. Now let's uh, try. Uh, uh, let's try this again. Okay, let's. Uh, Quick forward this. Uh, um, but maybe there's no point in watching this again uh, because at that point it was game over for me. Uh, so we can uh, go to game two and uh, watch uh, the remaining two games because at that point it was just uh, my struggling uh, and against them and they had uh, very good draws. So uh, there wasn't much I could do in that position with them uh, gaining uh, so many tokens and I succeeded to kill uh, Ravager but they immediately drew another one from top and then another one so um, so I wasn't able to win that but uh, game 2 I drew a collector of again and it's also as good against uh, against uh, hardened scales as against uh, hammer so it was a pretty good position uh, and pretty good card to have in this matchup so they can't use the ravager no hangerback walker they can do anything i just uh, uh, played my drum is cool before uh, damage and uh, I drew uh, I found my uh, Knight of Autumn uh, to deal with their Ozolith um, 
uh, it was a pretty good position for me uh, had a lot of good stuff on the field uh, I was attacking them and they had no cards in hand I had another removal in hand so pretty good pretty good so I killed the hangerback walker in response to the modular ability uh, they had some some something going on but it wasn't much uh, of course they had Lurus which uh, they won't have any more uh, so I blinked Grief, discarded the uh, Lurus after combat and uh, discarded the Lurus after combat and that was very important uh, for this match uh, because Lurus could have potentially turn over the game uh, in spite of uh, Ofi uh, if they had some top deck removal and stuff like that but after Yorion entered the battlefield uh, they didn't really have any more chance uh, me just killing them their biggest flyer and uh, able to block uh, other flyer with Yorion and drew a bunch of cards and did a bunch of abilities and uh, that was it uh, the game too That was it uh, for game two. Uh, Kill them this turn. Okay, so uh, let's see game three. Okay, before game three, uh, I can quickly go over over cyber plans. So uh, for this matchup, it's uh, similar to hammer matchup. Uh, you go two forces, uh, one uh, knight. Uh, one letter from Blight, uh, Collector of the Revoker, and two Crime Punishments in. Uh, for that cards, you remove uh, Grist because it's too slow. Uh, Eternal Witness, it's also too slow for this matchup. And uh, you remove. Uh, uh, I usually remove uh, one Attach the Spirit Realm, uh, one Agadim's Awakening. I remove uh, two of my. Stone Forges, uh, Butter Skull, and Sword of Fire Ice, which is useless. And also, Butter Skull uh, and Fire and Ice are useless in these matchups against Hammer and uh, and here against uh, Hardened Scales. So, in a, in a matchup against Merktide, I have just three cards to bring in, but they're the best cards you can have, and uh, I don't think I need anything else because the matchup is already good so I just brought in two endurance and one sanctifier and lack which I can tutor with my Eldrami calls. Uh, uh, for the Yagmot matchup uh, I bring in uh, of course the revoker and sanctifier and lack and the two endurances that's all I bring in uh, against them it isn't much, but you can tutor, uh, you can tutor uh, Revoker, and obviously you have a grief, solitude, ephemerate stuff uh, to try to win these games uh, like that. Okay, so uh, that are the sideboard plans uh, for all decks I uh, faced this league. Very good sideboards, obviously. Okay, so game two, uh, game three against game three against uh, against that, uh, I had a pretty spectacular hand. So I decided uh, to I decided to uh, go turn two little from blight on Urza Saga. I think that was uh, I think that was uh, best play I could have done uh, for that turn and the most important one. So uh, 
That means their turn 3 they play another Rusa Saga and Hangerberg Falker. So playing that uh, Little from Blight turn 2 was pretty important because now I have so many options and it allows me to just win the game essentially on the spot on this turn. So uh, this situation you could do a few different things but I think uh, definitely it's the best to go uh, March on Ursa Saga Prismatic Ending uh, go uh, Solitude uh, Malakir's Rebirth on two of their creatures and then Prismatic Ending the Hangerback Walker Okay, so that's what I did and uh, it's uh, pretty hard for them to recover uh, after that play. So in that position, in this position, I have to target uh, Ravager first, so they do the sacking uh, after that. And now I can use my march, and I didn't even use the prismatic ending in this position. I just wanted to draw a card and see what it will be. Uh, so I attack first, they uh, sack our bound worker to put counters on Zabas, which is, was ideal for me because I was able to prismatic ending the Zabas and just see what will they play. I had another, uh, I had another uh, Eladramis call, so I found grief with it, and at this point. I had 4 mana, 2 Graves and Ophi and it was pretty much game over for them. I decided to play Grief first, discarded that uh, Ballista from their hand. Uh, I could have gone for the Prismatic Ending, uh, it would, would have been better with Ophi in hand, uh, but uh, they had uh, only uh, 2 mana. Uh, and only one gives them a color but uh, that uh, turned out to be a misplay in the end because they found their second land uh, to kill my Ophi but it, again it really didn't matter much because I had everything in this game and I was attacking with two of my creatures um, I just uh, used my prismatic ending on Ballista here uh, to prevent them from doing some uh, crazy stuff uh, but uh, they didn't have cards in hand and it was pretty much over for them and uh, that's it so they p did put some counters on ink Inkmot but they were forced to block with Inkmot Nexus uh, this turn and which meant uh, that uh, they don't have any top decks which can lead to me losing ok so that, that was it game 4 and uh, game 5 was again a Meritad I got a bit nervous game 5 and uh, did uh, did some bad plays which caused me to lose the game. I did have uh, Grief uh, Undying turn 1 which is the best play you want to have and I discarded their uh, expressive iteration and regent, regent on turn 1. So I was in a pretty good position uh, attacking uh, with my Grief uh, casting my uh, casting my Eldramis call uh, so I went for Endurance uh, with the first tutor. I wanted uh, to make sure they don't uh, cast Regent, but they uh, did cast Regent, and uh, here's when I, where I misplayed. Uh, so I used another, I casted my second Eladramis call, unfortunately, and uh, uh, used it to find my grist which wasn't a very good play at this moment um, I should have gone uh, for uh, some uh, aggressive creature uh, like uh, Stoneforge Mystic 
stuff like that because their merited regent was just 4-4 uh, and not able to block my grief and I had uh, I had the okay hand with endurance if they attack I can cast it as instant then attack back uh, so I was in a pretty good situation until now but uh, I, I misplayed uh, this last game, uh, as I said, I was becoming uh, kind of nervous because I had uh, three uh, three four one runs prior to this league, and so uh, I was kind of anxious about uh, doing four one again, and uh, it led me to misplay this. Uh, this turn, unfortunately, uh, after this, uh, after that misplay, I wasn't able to do much. Uh, they were, they had a lot of cards in hand, and also good ones, so I wasn't able to deal with the uh, Dash Dragon, and uh, didn't draw anything good, and they had, uh, they had removal and counters for stuff I did. And at this point it was over, but uh, a pretty important mistake there. I just uh, just uh, finding that grist and the second grief. It was a really terrible, terrible play, and uh, the biggest mistake I did uh, in a long time. Uh, but luckily I was able to win the remaining two games and I didn't pay for my mistake game one. Uh, we will now see the remaining two games. Uh, as, I, uh, as I already talked about, uh, this deck is favored to win in this matchup. Uh, I have a lot of stuff here. They are not. Uh, it's hard for them to deal with. Definitely. Uh, unfortunately, I was stuck on lands on lands here. But uh, it's something. It happens when you play this deck, and it happens a lot. You have to be prepared for that, because you only play. Uh, you play a low amount of, of lands and you don't really need much lands to play this deck. Um, 3 is most often enough to play it. Okay, they... I decided to aggressively remove their graveyard with endurance and I was able to save uh, my creatures two times with blink effects and uh, that was it for them. They ran out of removal and uh, weren't able to cast a large murder here. I also had solitude if they did so uh, it was a pretty easy game. Uh, game 2 for me, and uh, we will now see the last game against Murtad. And they had uh, Ragavan turn 1, but this time I had uh, removal for the Murtad. I chose not to play uh, Grief uh, Malakir here. In their counter spell because it would definitely be uh, very bad for me if they uh, had uh, response to that. So I waited a turn and they played the iteration and now it was ideal time for me uh, to try to do the thing. So I played land uh, if they have spell pierce first, then uh, then do the grief thing, ephemerate, discard lightning bolt. Uh, discard Blood Moon, 
uh, have rebound, so a pretty good situation for me. Uh, also had uh, endurance and grief in hand, which is great to the double uh, channel alert hand. I decided to play Endurance immediately, uh, in case they draw Merktide, they can cast it. They did find uh, a removal for my grief, but I was in much better position. And uh, I had removal for their Merktide if they find it in this situation, but they still uh, weren't able to find it, but they did find Delirium and start attacking me for 6, but I had uh, a lot of removal and uh, I uh, used my ending and decided to uh, use my touch to blink endurance. But uh, again, uh, I should have played it in my turn uh, to uh, remove their graveyard uh, before their turn so they are not able to cast last large Merktide, which obviously I can uh, then kill with Touch the Spirit Realm. But, uh, but I did exile it. Uh, did exile it next turn and cast my grief to discard the Ragawan, attack for 3 and just be generally in a very good position. Uh, uh, I was, uh, as I said, was getting pretty nervous uh, this last game and I did make some bad decisions and plays. Uh, Uh, but that's it, uh, they did attack uh, for 3 this turn, I think the game lasted, or the game lasted one more turn, where I cast uh, Prismatic Ending. And, uh, but that was it, uh, that's, that's all, that's the league, so we'll just come back to the deck once again and uh, I really think uh, this deck uh, could have a future in a current uh, post Lotus uh, meta game and because uh, it's really good against uh, against uh, hammer especially post board it's really good against uh, hardened scales and all uh, all uh, artifact based decks because you have a lot of hate for those especially with this new touch of the spirit realms which can also uh, bounce the construct tokens uh, kill large creatures uh, do a lot of combat tricks uh, uh, also uh, Kaldra is a pretty good uh, blocker for large creatures and also attacker uh, in situations when you're trying to be aggressive. Eladram is cool in a deck, allows you to have a specific uh, targeted hate uh, for a lot of uh, different kind of archetypes and a lot of different kind of decks. So as I said, this deck doesn't really have uh, very very bad matchups. It just has a few matchups where it's um, slightly less favored to win. Uh, I would say uh, it's mainly the other Yorion piles, uh, which uh, is trying to do the same thing, uh, but are playing some cards. Uh, that have uh, more value in a long game. So in these games you will be trying to uh, 
find that grief in starting hand because it's the easiest way uh, to kill your opponent with uh, grief uh, ephemerate turn one uh, followed with any other creature like thermograph mystic something like that it's definitely the easiest way you can also uh, you can also win the long game uh, uh, with other aggressive and value creatures but uh, the biggest problem uh, for this for this deck is uh, teferi here uh, teferi uh, small teferi because uh, it uh, kills or all, all our one mana undying and blink effect uh, and we have a lot of those in deck and it practically kills all of them, you're not able to use those and they're pretty good as uh, combat tricks, uh, removal tricks and stuff like that so uh, when opponent plays uh, Teferi it's then a hard to... ok I had to pause for a second and uh, as I was saying so uh, I think uh, this deck has a future in a post Lotus uh, Modern uh, because uh, decks that uh, seem right now that will be uh, the leading decks in the format this deck can battle them very effectively, uh, very good and it's uh, the deck they don't want to see on the other side, definitely uh, so uh, that's it, that's the video for Abzan, uh, it's all, it also offers a very enjo enjoyable uh, gameplay and uh, if you like this general archetype you should definitely try this. That's it.